If you walk 100 miles due east of here with a handy oxygen cylinder, a pair of goggles and flippers, you're sure to strike oil. This, you see, is Aberdeen. Very dangerous uh, position. Master curling it into the box. Forsyth getting away on his first track, and oh, big goal! Brilliant goal by Gordon Straffen. Kennedy, then just forcing them across the field. Hamilton trying to turn one way, then the other. All the youngsters are lucky, but it's touched in at long last by Steve Archibald. One minute plus injury time remaining. Derek Hamilton, there it is for Aberdeen. It's McGee, McDonald, and McGee. He's gone round the well, Jarvie's there with a chance. Oh, a great goal by Jarvie. Jarvie, that's a great run, Scanlon. Oh, that was almost a clearance by Archibald. And that's a goal, McGee. Now, having beaten Celtic twice in the past month in Glasgow, in the league championship race, people are almost automatically saying, well, there you are, they've won the championship already. But is that the prevailing mood at Pataudry at the moment? No, I, I feel that uh, we've got to a point now that um, it's a big test of nerve and character now that beating Celtic doesn't necessarily give us a championship. We've got really difficult matches starting today mm -hmm. against St Mirren and then we have to go to Tannadice on Tuesday. And well, you know the respect I've got for Jim McLean. But that should be a very tough one for you. Oh yes, it's, I mean that's a very difficult one. And then we go to Easter Road, where we haven't won there for about five, six years. What a majestic setting for this match today! The weather absolutely superb, and a huge support has come down from Fotodry for this game. But of course, it's not the attraction of Edinburgh. The weather—it's a possibility of Aberdeen winning the championship this very day. A very faithful support for a highly consistent team. Well, Hibs have the advantage of the very famous slope at Easter Road, but I think Aberdeen have the balance in terms of a very strong wind that's blowing today. I think uh, diagonally right to left across the screen as you watch it, as you watch this game. And, uh, of course, with this huge Aberdeen support here today, one end of the ground, this team is going to get encouragement for the entire 90 minutes. Indeed, even as we speak, there are still thousands coming into the ground, and that's a free kick through Sean Scanlon. Long probing ball, McGee. What a great buy he's been for Aberdeen. That's a very good looking ball. Taken cleanly by Huggins. McMaster, bit of a miscue. Rugby taking his time about it. Oh, nice bit of skill off rugby, getting away with it. Hardly anybody over on that side of the field. That comes to Gordon Strachan. Look at the bounce of that ball yet. Strachan gets away with it beautifully. Rod down, free kick. Callahan the villain. I wonder really if Gordon Strachan is fully fit. He's been. Uh... Oh, that's a goal! Steve Archibald. 
As Steve Archibald and again McGee with a great chance. It comes loose. And it's a goal by Watson. Kennedy once again. Curl it towards Archibald. It's a good touch in. What goes? Sin, yes. Scandal in the scorer. Kennedy. Archibald. Now McGee. Still on it. Great run by McGee. Does. Yes. Been far from a classic. But Aberdeen have done exactly everything right from this beautifully inside. Watson. Oh, the bar. Scanlon. Yes. What a marvellous goal to finish this match. And that's it. They have won. Alec Ferguson is on now in the penalty area. There he's in. Aberdeen have definitely won the championship. Can you blame the man for going out of his mind temporarily? I, I made my way down at the final whistle to the track and I says to Pat, I says, well, it's, there's still a minute to go at, at Love Street. It's nothing each. And I looked up at the um, press box and saw Alistair Guthrie the, in the Aberdeen Evening Express. Eventually, it was like that, you know, and... Well, it's all history. You, you, you've got it in the film. <laughs> I mean, I didn't feel it myself, <laughs> but uh, it was magic. What an intriguing match in prospect. Rangers playing in the seventh successive final. They've never been beaten outside of Celtic by another team in the final in 53 years. And, uh, of course, Aberdeen hadn't won the cup in 12 years, although they went into this game as favourites. It was a sparkling and colourful spectacle as the teams came out onto Hamden Park. And the Aberdeen team shows only really one significant change, and that is that John McMaster is in, and the man we thought uh, might have played... Kirawea is out of this uh, side. There seems to be some suggestion of doubt about Weir's fitness, but if it weren't that, would you be surprised at all by the very fact that he might have been dropped in preference to McMaster, Paul? Well, I think it's uh, McMaster is a very good player, and I think on the day, uh, I think he's trying to play a wee bit tighter than normal at the beginning, and I think uh, that's why uh, McMaster's in and Weir isn't. So that is an Aberdeen team which has been playing with great confidence. And there is Rangers, and uh, one interesting feature is that you could be looking at a Rangers team fielding three players who are about to play the last of a game for the club. There's Sandy Jardin, Colin Jackson, Alec Miller, and if we include the substitutes bench, Tommy McLean. That would be, I think, a rather unique situation for a cup final. And off we go into the 1982 Scottish Cup final with Gordon Strachan immediately picked up by Alec Miller. Alec Miller, who will, I'm, I'm quite sure, be called upon to play a marking game. Touched away, and a neat touch down there by DL. One of the young Rangers men who have come on well this season. Sandy Jardin. Five cup medals he already has. Rangers with the win. Carson. Very coolly forward. McDonald. That's Miller. It's high and away over. And the first major misjudgment of the day by Alec Miller, who's uh, played up front for Rangers. In fact, I think he's played in virtually every position for Rangers bar goalkeeper Simpson picked off very quickly though and Dawson McGee got there but the long leg of Colin Jackson coming in Strachan trying to take his man on neat little jinking movements again enticing the player to come towards him and another free kick for that late tackle by Dawson Dawson protesting about it, but there's no question that that was a free kick and Strachan is already a marked man and uh, perhaps more than metaphorically speaking too. So we have 
A free kick to Aberdeen in a very good situation. Well, that's a good curling ball there, McLeish. The first real effort we've had in the game. Exactly four minutes gone, and the big red-haired internationalist coming up to try his luck at that. Strachan getting the free kick out of that and floated this in. And there was a header there by McLeish. That'll be a throw to Rangers as John McMaster. What a useful player this man is. Beautiful player when he gets into his stride. That's good play there. John McDonald and Russell. Good tackle by Miller. Well, the referee didn't think it was a good tackle. I think he's given a free kick. Maybe a trifle harsh on Willie Miller there. Willie Miller who'll certainly go to Spain with Scotland. That's a Cooper free kick. There's Colin Jackson! And I think he did a bit of climbing. Yes, it's a free kick. Nevertheless, Paul, he was up there. Yes, the two centre-backs have been pushing up at all set pieces, actually. Uh, he comes in, he just lays his arm on, on McLeish as he's jumping. Definite free kick. Kennedy. Strachan, now what can he do here? Just broke away from him. Still danger on for Rangers, brilliant play by McMaster. But he killed it with uh, the wrong foot, I think he's better on his left. But an intelligent build-up with the uh, players going in various directions and good linking work. And I think McMaster perfectly entitled to try his chance there. Jim Bent, who really hasn't got going in the match so far. Cooper, where he goes. Brilliant ball by Cooper. Diaw. And it goes in there, John McDonald, he scored. one nothing for Rangers. A quite superb goal by John McDonald. With... 15 minutes gone, the Rangers supporters in ecstasy. There's the score. Now, McDonald is renowned for his finishing. And that beautiful ball by Cooper in midfield set it up. Push forward there and watch the running of DL. DL did a lot of good work for Rangers. And this is where it was valuable, turning quickly. And look at this deaf little header. That was pushed forward, and watch this turn by Diel as we give you the goal again from behind, and that is quite superb finishing. Rangers are one up. Ralph well, Rigby was hard in again, and that's why this time, dragging Jackson away out of anything that Paul Sturrock said. Aberdeen should be doing much more frequently. Referee in the way. Oh, look at that lovely work by Strachan. There's a second tackle. McMaster in a way by Jackson at the stretch. There's Rugby. Aberdeen exerting more pressure. Coming back into the game again. And Alec Bullock goes right across. Even Kennedy's pace couldn't get round the edge of the Rangers' defence. Aberdeen's first corner kick of the match. And about uh, 12 minutes of the first half gone. That's a good looking ball again to Jackson. Hard hit there by Simpson. And there's a floating equaliser by Alec McLeish. One all, a superb goal. That really was brilliantly taken. 33 minutes of the first half gone. And Aberdeen's central defender brings his team alive again with as cute a goal as you'll see at any time. And the fact is so reminiscent of a goal that Gordon Strachan scored recently against him. Just watch this as the ball breaks down here. A beautiful piece of skill. McLeish wondering what to do with it. He decided, let's go for the top corner. And he made it. Well, this is always uh, a spectacular goal to see when somebody calls it right of the fence. 
Real brilliantly taken. William Villa very awkward with it. Deck to Russell to Cooper. Cooper brilliantly running, getting it to that left side. Great play. Russell. Oh, Sandy Jarvin going through. Nice sneak tackle there by Kennedy. And John Good comes away at great pace. This is a good counter attack by Aberdeen. Strachan may try one on his own, and it's a brilliant save. Stewart got his hand to that, I think. This was a counter attack. And watch how cutely Strachan decided to come forward, take it on his own, and there was a hand to that. Gordon Strachan. Simple, straightforward, knocked back by John McClellan as the halftime whistle goes. And Hamden, both sets of supporters, Rangers and Aberdeen, rising to the two set of players. Aberdeen won, Rangers won. The goal, first goal scored by John McDonald there, a beautifully deft header from an excellent break initiated by Cooper to DL. The header in, and Aberdeen storming back with a big fella you just saw blinkingly flash up the tunnel. Alec McLeish showing that he's not only a stopper said to have, but an immaculate and highly skillful finisher curling the ball around the side. It is indeed a very open game. So we go into the second half. Sandy Jardin, who has five cup medals in his pocket in the past, is in the dressing room, not recovered from that knock. And the score is one all, and the game is infinitely wider open than we thought it would be at the start. Actually, I think... McAdam will take a marking job on Strachan. Will this be a straight swap? Miller to right back, McAdam marking Strachan. Well, this could be very interesting indeed. Colin McAdam, of course, uh, came to Rangers as a as McGee going forward there, and I think the referee just waves play on. Uh, Colin McAdam came as a striker, but of course he played as a defender very often too uh, for Motherwell. Yeah, lays it off very nicely, but Cooper picks up, and McLeish. Russell to Cooper. That's good play by Cooper. Jackson, combining very well, Bet did all the running for Rangers there. Down he goes, waves, play on, the referee does. And that's drilled in, and oh. that was a miss. That was a blatant miss by Rangers. And I think the very presence of the two players caused a bit of confusion there, Paul. I think Aberdeen was surprised there was no offside. Well, certainly confused everybody, and it went, and it looked to me as if DL was offside. Yeah. Certainly looked as if he was in an offside position. Russell can't get out of that as a good ball there. Buggy Bell playing well since he came on as a substitute. Strachan floats that in delicately. Feels for a penalty there, but Strachan gets up a good ball indeed. Oh, oh. that's tipped away by Black. Total anguish by Eddie Black. I think he tried too fine a touch on it. All he needed to do was turn his head to the left, and it would have gone in. He tried to do something that John McDonald had done in getting his goal, but it was too fine a touch. Look at it. 14 minutes remaining. The still confident Aberdeen supporters. Rugby. It's the ball. That was an intelligent ball. There's Kennedy, wants to finish, got it alike. It's a good one. Oh, that was McGee coming up fast. Killing that there was a corner, but that's exactly the move that Aberdeen wanted. Good running by Kennedy. And he had a lot of support, a lot of players coming in. Look at the way Strachan just brushed it to the side. And McGee couldn't put it the right side of the post. Up comes John McClelland and Cooper and McAdam. 
And a brilliant save from that DL header. That was a very difficult ball to take. Excellent header down. There's McLean. Wants a one to and gets it. Good looking ball by McLean, and that's off the crossbar. Still there. Willie Miller away. Rangers almost putting it away. What a game this is. Certainly one of the best cup finals I've been at for a long time. Strachan, that's a free kick. Well, Leighton, when that came off the bar, looked as if he thought the danger was over. It certainly wasn't. Dougie Bell goes forward. Five minutes remaining. Cooper, will he let fly? He does. A couple of yards over the bar. Still a good player. We've seen him now do two things at either end of the park. Try to finish and defending very well as well. That's it. Now, this, uh, this really was a miss by Rangers. Well, at least Danny Cooper did very intelligently getting forward, realising the ball had not been over the line. We're into injury time, well into it now. And there it is. The full 90 minutes are up, and we'll be playing extra time in the cup final. It has been a quite extraordinary game, full of quality football, certainly much closer than I thought it would be. Both teams have had excellent chances, particularly Aberdeen in the last 20 minutes. They looked a quality team, and I wonder why Rugby's being singled out by Alec Ferguson for the lecture there, but he's uh, certainly annoyed about something. Well, what a prospect we have for the next uh, half hour. And yet again, we go into extra time. We had extra time in the cup final um, last year. And Paul Stoddard knows what it means to get into a final half hour as we now do. The score is still one all. by Strachan Jackson and that looked very awkward indeed Strachan wants to take that as an intelligent ball by Strachan and the referee thinks it was taken much too quickly Actually as I said earlier the longer the game goes on the more chance of Rangers coming back into the game Well the Rangers have been hemmed back in the, the past 20-25 minutes haven't been coming forward all that much and there uh, is McLean that so that's a break by Bat. Bat on his own. Bell's with him. And good recovery won by Doggy Bell. Bat hasn't been able to shake himself into a positive game. He went forward there with the intention of going on his own. Strachan. Well, that's a brilliant ball, McGee. He's caught. Mark McGee has put Aberdeen into the lead. 2-1. The very break that Aberdeen have been fighting so hard for. That is a very vital goal indeed. Away went Strachan and watch this quite superb pass. Floats it right beyond the defence and McGee down triumphantly turning away. It in well, there's Jackson trying to go up. Russell, well knocked away by Willie Miller. Here's McGee, this is a good looking attack. He's got to part with it now. Black, surely he must put it away. Oh, brilliant save. Stuart again, saving Rangers. The danger is still on, but that relieves it as McLean picks it up. That was. Brilliant goalkeeping by Stewart. McAdam. That. 
Jackson gets away. That's a fatal mistake by the Rangers captain. Here's Tracken. What's he going to try and do? He can't. This is one of the men of the match. Jim Stewart. And there's been a collision between Dawson and Strachan down nearby the post. That's two fantastic saves from Jim Stewart there. World class the first one. One against one. The narrowing of the angle perfect and then getting down and trying to use his body, realising the ball was going higher than that and getting the hand up. McKee running very well. And it, it's still there. What's McGee going to do? It must be. Yes. Strachan has made it 3-1. And that is it, I would imagine. The little man tumbling over with joy as the Rangers' defence widened, the gaps appeared, and he pumped it away. Somehow or other, Alec Muller had a blind spot. He looked as if he had that ball under his control. He stumbled. And there was McGee shoving it across, and look how gratefully that was received. That ball does it. Well, that's it all over now, that's it. Rangers seem to be in sixes and sevens here. There's no marking at all in the box. And there's the end of the first half of extra time. Aberdeen leading by three goals to one. Ten minutes of extra time remaining. Cooper, there's Kennedy. Strachan. There goes Cooper. Cooper with a great chance. Cooper must make it four. He does. Oh. He could hardly believe he got through eventually. And one of Aberdeen's great young players makes it 4-1. And Aberdeen a running rapid. Away went Cooper. Colin Jackson was really stepped out. And watch the way the youngster kept going forward. As I said, he could only believe the ball broke there. And then, whoop! It's well nigh over. One wonders why Eric Black is bothering to do that. The referee is about to blow, and he has. Aberdeen have won the Scottish Cup for the first time in 12 years. There is a time for delighted Alec Ferguson and John Gregg immediately over to Ferguson to congratulate him. And the sad figure of Gregg departs as Aberdeen pick up the rejoicing. There is Willie Miller. Here is the jubilation. There's a kiss and there's a cup. An absolutely marvellous finish for Aberdeen. Quite superb play, the quality and the class telling in the end. And here is the undoubtedly delighted Aberdeen manager. One of the best days of your life, Alec. Oh, yes. I mean... Uh... Oh, well, two years ago was uh, probably the finest, but you know, this is ice in the cake. I think everyone wishes to win the Scottish Cup in their lifetime. Well, I've done it for the first time in my life. Well, your players are celebrating, <clears throat> you, do, you deserve a break, but I don't think you're going to get a break. What are your plans now? Well, I mean, the immediate plans, you're not going straight back to Aberdeen. No, right? no, no, we're stopping off in Persia. Uh -huh. Secret, treat, secret agent. Treat in Persia, <laughs> but I'm telling you, we're going to have some night. A long night, yeah. Oh, and back in triumph to the city tomorrow. Yes, uh, we should be at the park about two, we'll go through the city. I think there'll yeah. be a few there. Oh, there'll be a few there, all right. <laughs>
That's the ball, boys. Plus, John Gregg and Alec Ferguson. Great bodies. Alec Ferguson, an ex-Ranger, of course. John McClellan, Jim Layton and Peter McCloy. The young lad, David McPherson, Jim Baird, Gordon Strachan. Out they stream. Alec McLeish just on the right, big tall red here, and there's David Sign, the referee. Swam forward beautifully by McMaster. McPherson. Well, that's a very dangerous thing, there's no offside, he's a great chance, brilliantly saved. Terrible lapse in the Rangers' defence. Almost punished, but for the good sense of the goalkeeper. Towering ball, well picked up by Strachan. That will be a corner kick. And the number of occasions that uh, these midfield players of Aberdeen are picking up in midfield from so-called clearances by Rangers spells a lot of trouble to come for the Glasgow side. Here with it, Rigby almost got through the tunnel. Cooper. Wasn't so much a tackle by Strachan, more an interception, and that is superb play by Aberdeen. Simpson's on the break. There goes Black, that's brilliant play. Up comes Cooper. Looking for somebody inside. Rangers really under pressure. And that was the most elegant move forward by Aberdeen. Now bet. Having to make Clark turn back for it though. They've lost the impetus, Rangers. Bet again. Oh, and Clark very wildly up. I think you could describe as a most intemperate tackle, but I think he probably came worse off, rather twisting himself. Well, you can see very late in. Well, it's a beautiful attack, Kenny. It was a marvellous move from Aberdeen. Neil Cooper started it in his own half, and... He's got up the park to support it from a pass uh, from Eric Black. And Peter McCloy's done his job again, he saved the day for Rangers. Bet. Now that was an excellent save. We were saying that the, the pitch is a bit bumpy, so really Leighton had to get that first time. 20, 25 minutes of this game. Match the occasion. Now it, this half is rather teetering out. Good running by Black. Well, that was a bang. No whimper about that one. And what you've got to watch about this young man is the way he floats into positions, Kenny. He fights hard for the ball here. Uh, he gets his foot up. But it's just unfortunate he doesn't strike it as well as probably he'd like to, and it's just went way to the far post. I doubt if they could have had a bigger support today, despite the recent fall from Grace. Before. That's a good run by Ben again, an intelligent ball by Dawson. There's Ben, there's Sandy Clark, tries to go up on it, and that will be... Well, if it gone over, it would have been a goal kick. And I think I've always been a great admirer of Jim Vett. Look at this run, for example. He's got a lot of critics of, amongst the Rangers supporters, but he got into the right position. A little unfortunate that Sandy Clark couldn't make it. Rangers' most intelligent face is Bobby Russell at the heart of it. Mike Cooper. Good running by Russell. Oh, that's a great save. A thoroughly convincing save, not the slightest suggestion of doubt. Good running on the right again, and look what would have happened had that bounced out. Exactly two minutes remaining. 
A goal now, and that would be the end. Here goes Bet. Cooper is there, Bet on the run. It's three against two. Bet is with it brilliantly saved. Oh, a brilliant move by Bet. The kind of indication of a player who can rise above mediocrity and equally the goalkeeper. Strachan. And it's up and over. And we are now 10 seconds away from extra time. And as a commentator, I've got quite used to that, having been at Hampton in the past four occasions when this has happened. Well, it always makes for an interesting afternoon. I wasn't doing anything anyway tonight. There it goes, that's the final whistle. And we go into extra time. And again, I have to be the first to admit that I would not have predicted that scoreline after 90 minutes. Strachan, the Lancers kind of run forward in this position. Good try for the cross. Well shepherded there by John McClellan. I wouldn't say that uh, Gordon Strachan coming through here has been totally at his best today, but notice how McClellan refrained from tackling until he tried to get that over. That's John Hewitt. Four minutes of this first half of extra time left. Oh, that's almost an own goal. Total misunderstanding between McPherson and Peter McCloy. A, a kind of tactical misdemeanor. I mean, if Rangers have been pressing forward as he have with only Sandy coming forward the chances of scoring I mean, obviously less likely but here is Strachan no McKinnon picks him up Russell oh a gift now Simpson what's a one two that's a good ball McGee likes his position it could be there it is the winner that will win the cup Eric Black, 1-0, that is the end. The youngster who scored that goal in Gothenburg in the 11th minute of the second period, and the man who caused it, Neil Simpson, driving forward, and then it was neatly laid out by Black, and Amy Kane, great positioning, and a man who's played so well for Rangers, couldn't get near it. Aberdeen, you must now strongly fancy to go back up the road to the north with a cup after a goal like that. In the history of the competition, in the history of Aberdeen, that they have uh, lifted two cups in a season, and they will become the first team outside of Rangers Celtic to win the cup in successive seasons. That's what's awaiting them, and they're into injury time. McGee, corner kick. And has the whistle gone? It has. There he is. A little slower than he came out of the dugout in Gothenburg, but perhaps he's used it. I must say, that man must be drained. Alec Ferguson. Absolutely delighted, of course. Come on, come on, he's saying. The photographer getting Alec to pose. A real hubbub of noise now. And these supporters, I think, imagining at one stage it might have been a very frustrating day for them, and suddenly that goal by Eddie Black taking the cup again. There's the disappointment in the face of John McClellan. And that was all there was in the game, that one goal. The presentation to be made by Mrs. Mary Younger, wife of Big Tam Younger there, president of the SFA. Very jovial gentleman with Ernie Walker 
at the side. There we are, Willie Miller. Well, there we are, a gleam in the eye as bright as the Northern Lights. And down go this victorious team. I think no, there may be some old-timers in Aberdeen listening to this at the moment, but you know how the old-timers will tell you about the great teams of the past. I think I would have to say now that this is the greatest team that Aberdeen have ever had. If anybody thinks there was a better side in this, I'm sure they'll let me know, but the history books will tell everybody that there never has been this level of achievement, and that is what matters. The Scottish Cup for the second time in succession, the European Cup Winners' Cup, a high-level performance in the League Championship, and Fergie himself must now be considered one of the greatest managers outside Jockstein himself. Side, Sandy Jordan. Well, for 35 years of age, Sandy Jordan is still sprightly. Age shall not weary him. That's into McKimmy with a shot, he scored! The fullback comes out of the blue, scores his first goal of the season for Aberdeen. Ferguson is perhaps getting a little used to winning trophies and titles and championships. He better ball here, there. Stop. 2 1. And Aberdeen achieve a fight back. It's an up and under. And here's Portis with a chance, he's done it. He's got the equaliser, would you believe? And there is the presence of the manager with Willie Miller and David Latham of the Scottish League. A day of celebration, an almost family outing, as it were. And the backbone of Aberdeen's triumph was that marvellous run they had between October and March when they went 27 games without defeat, putting them really beyond reach. Let's now have a look at uh, the two teams just to confirm the players who are playing this afternoon. There is Aberdeen now. Jim Layton is one of the best goalkeeping records ever in uh, British football. He's only conceded 23 goals this season. It's quite remarkable. And, you know, when you look back over the Aberdeen record over the past few seasons, you'll discover that even when they lost the league, they lost it with a better defensive goal record than the team who won it. And I'm thinking mainly of Celtic in this uh, instance. Stuart McKinley, number two. As I said, it's his first cup final. Although he'll, uh, I, I would imagine, remember the goal he scored to win the title. Although I, he, he, of all the players, will be very nervous indeed. There's the Celtic side. Danny's goalkeeper, internationalist, Pat Bonner. Danny McGrain at fullback, who's won four out of the five Scottish Cup ties he's played here. That's a remarkable record for the Celtic captain. Mark Reed, Roy Aiken, a tremendous strength to Celtic side. I don't think they would like to come into a cup final without the strength of Roy Aiken bolstering the defence. And I, I would imagine in the game at some period you'll see some of the spectacular charges he has downfield. The two brothers, Willie McStay and Paul McStay. I think Willie in particular will derive great comfort from playing in this match, even though he'll be feeling a little sympathy 
for Tom McAdam, unable to play because of injury. And there's Bob Valentine, the referee from the Dundee, a compositor with a, a ma major publishing firm up there, very placid individual, as I said, he was the referee in the League Cup final. Under somewhat controversial circumstances, I may say, but a nerveless individual, I think. I've seen him on big occasions before, and he, he seems to be remarkably calm, and he will have to be today. Aberdeen, the favourites, again Celtic, who have won nothing this season, and that might be the biggest stimulus of all. The referee patiently waiting until the last piper is off the playing pitch. The nails building up, and off go Aberdeen. The team which has already won the league championship, looking for the first ever double. Celtic, of course, have already done that. And Willie McStay playing in his first cup final with an emphatic touch pass to the goalkeeper. Alec McLeish blinking into the sun as he went for that. Reed. Burns. Little jab forward, appealing for the free kick, and it doesn't come. No whistle. Celtic playing with the wind. And they also have the advantage of the sun, and that was a very deceptive ball. Totally deceived Willie Miller. One by Proben, and that was heading for McStay, and that's just passed. Mother McLeod. Suddenly, out of almost nothing, this move brought the verge of the first goal, played back like that, and there was McLeod taking it first time. Neat turn by McKinney, but he gives possession away. McStay just caught, up comes Rigby. Brilliant burst by Rigby. Superb run by the big man, offside. A brilliant spot there by the Aberdeen fullback, catching Celtic totally unawares. He simply could not believe that he was going to come through like that. But his final pass, I'm afraid, got a right. Now watch the spot of this man, right through. Now, we did see the long run, but that is where it was offside. That'll do the nails a lot of good. A good counter-attack goal by Celtic. Proven. That's a bad ball. Proven again. Proven for Celtic. Just touched away now, McLeod. Can he get his shot in? He can't. There it is again, and it just passed. The referee has either awarded a goal kick or there was offside. Pointing down there, let's see. Well, that was the best Celtic chance so far. Good thrusting run there by David Proven. Couldn't quite get the shot in. Look, Modder McLeod can bust on it from there. Again. Played it too much, and that'll be a corner kick. Must say, I'm thoroughly enjoying this match, it's flowing. There have been these incidents, some good quality football in midfield. They miss chances, the kind of combination that makes for a cup tie that I think is going to get better and better. Strachan plays it away wide, Alec McLeish is up. Here's Black with a chance, has it gone in? It has! Eric Black has called for Aberdeen, 1-0. As the Celtic defence looked around after 23 minutes, Aberdeen have taken the lead. Well now, that goal came when it looked as if the Celtic defence had everybody picked up. 
Now there was a deal for offside. But the game goes on. Well, Celtic picking up the play, driving on in midfield. Looking in the past couple of minutes, very determined for McStay and Willie Miller right in the way. Late in under pressure. Here's a great chance, McStay. McLeod and off the line. Brilliantly by McKinney. What a chance for Celtic. But on the other hand, great organisation in defence. What a superb opportunity for Celtic to make the game level. Look at the fullback, Leighton. Brilliant, a Fanko and a superb clearance here. And that's what fullbacks are paid to do get on the line under pressure. Aberdeen in a very narrow lead indeed. Oh, I think Brent McGarvey thought he would have got a free kick out of that. Now McGee. Oh, does that better than anybody in the business? That's a great run, and that surely is a booking. Aiken was going to be left behind in the slipstream. And I think uh, Gordon Strachan had better get out of that. Well now, watch McGee. This is the definitive McGee play. Shimming his way in and bump. Oh. <laughs> Roy What's Aiken oh, has been sent off. Celtic are down to 10 men. No, I wouldn't have thought the tackle was of that severity of sentence unless something was said as well. Celtic are reduced to 10 men. On it goes to McGee. Can he get it over? He does! Oh, and it was almost an own goal. Now, I believe that went right through three Aberdeen players. Now, I told you that Aberdeen are absolutely brilliant at these set pieces, causing other confusion. Watch it, one, two, three, and it was touched in almost as an own goal. And there goes the halftime whistle with Aberdeen, leading by one goal to nothing. The goal scored by Eric Black in the 23 minutes. There he is, Celtic reduced to 10 men with the sending off of Roy Aiken, off with uh, five minutes of that first half remaining. And Celtic with 10 men starting the second half, up against it, but they've been up against it before. McKimmy, but I think the touch was by McGarvey. Deep little pass from Cooper then, and Strachan gets his foot in. Here's McGarvey. Goal kick. Just doing a little bit much. Since the start of the second half, they actually, uh, Celtic have taken the game non-stop to Aberdeen. Um, in that respect, I'll have to be careful they don't lose another goal, because they're playing man for man at the back here in most situations. Now well, here's McGee. Brilliantly saved by Bonner. Well, that's exactly what uh, both Bobby Clark and Tommy Gemmell have been emphasising, the breakaway. Now, this is exactly what McGee likes to do with the defence, you know, run across it like this. When he puts his mind to it, he's got great control. McGee hadn't run back into position. Nobody challenging for that ball at all. Celtic coming back again. Here's Paul McStay. Quality ball, Proven trying around his man. There's the flick and Burns, and he was a bit deliberate with it. So Celtic support roused by this play. An act of utter defiance by Celtic against the odds. I would also say, Bobby, that uh, 
I, I do agree that Celtic need to score two goals, but and go into extra time. But if they got one now, surely it would be a tremendous shot in the arm to them. Well, I, I think you take you take it one step at a time, and as you say, Archie, I think you, you need a goal. And if they get a goal, well, it's only half an hour to, to hang out even for a replay. But uh, they're certainly, well, I'll tell you, they could make me eat my words. But uh, as I say, it's only Aberdeen that can throw it away, to be honest. Danny McGray. Well, there's a chance, and there's the equaliser. Paul McStay. That's it, actually. Just big. under five minutes remaining, and Aberdeen have been pulled back with McStay hammering that in. Watch him coming up to finish this off. There was a play on the right. Cutting inside. Danny McRae getting in the break down there. And McStay rattled it in. One each. Four minutes left. And the very subject that we were speaking about there to Bobby Clark. Now, Celtic, even though they have only ten men, they have fought back. There it is again. McStay with a brilliant goal, great finishing. Mugabe. That's an interesting looking ball and it's cycled up with it and it's just fast. Great effort by the substitute. Up he came, right across. A good diagonal run. Sloping away, but it did trouble Jim Layton. Bonner, well away with it. Tommy Byrne. And there it is, the final whistle. We go to extra time yet again. The sixth cup final in a row that's gone into an extra 30 minutes. So, with the... Celtic supporters in the main, chanting the team, and there's the boy who has taken us into extra time. We go into the extra 30 minutes. McKimmy. Free kick. There we are, the Aberdeen supporters. Good interception. However, picked up by Simpson. That was a very late tackle, I thought. However, striking with Sinclair. Does get his crossover. Stark. I think he wanted it back. Celtic at the moment, hemming Aberdeen in. Celtic would not mind the replay out of this situation. Bell with a great goal! Off the post! I thought it was in. And there it is, yes! Mark McGee does it! 2-1. I thought it was going in the first time, it did the second. Eight minutes of extra time gone. McGee finishing it off. Now watch his shot. How near it was. Quickly punched upon by Strachan. And McGee at the back. As prompt as you like. Now I think this was stunning Celtic. I think the Celtic defence thought it was in themselves. Back again to Strachan, and watch McGee's finish. Simple, but effective. Again, Celtic fight back again from that. Well, the words of Bobby Clark turn out to be absolutely accurate in saying that Aberdeen, despite an extremely poor second half, still had the ability to come back and lift the cup. Here's Danny McGrain. Tommy Burns is dipping and it's just passed. A great effort. Celtic 
stung into retaliation. The grain wanted to come forward a dipping shot. Curling, spinning. Black, McGee, Stark. That's a free kick. Free kick to Aberdeen in a very interesting position again. We said at the outset that uh, they can produce the effective and surprising move. Little did we think at that stage that we would be going into extra time when we made that first comment. Strachan. He's alone with it. Bell is going away to the right. You may try the chip or the bar. Brilliant effort. Oh, that, that is... I mean, little gems, this quality that he's got of producing something quite unexpected. And that's a marvellous view. And the way he swirled it round, the goalkeeper utterly beaten. Alec McLeish to take it. Black is trying to go in. And that's a pulse. McGee again, sneaked in at the back. He knew he would have killed it then. Watch his diagonal run across, suddenly comes into the picture. There he is, and the touch, and just the wrong side of the post. We're into injury time. I think Black is aware of it, want to simply hold on, but now Stark. McLeod was Stark, great second half by Mother McLeod. Alec Ferguson below me, looking at his watch, every few seconds. There's Stark, Mother McLeod should get that. And there goes the final whistle, Aberdeen have won the Scottish Cup for the fifth time in their history. Their first ever double, and 11 of these Don's players get three cup medals. They are the first team outside of Glasgow Rangers to win the cup three years in a row this century. Up come the players, Aberdeen who win a grand total of £21,575 for winning this cup. Celtic has run us up, 13600 and here comes one of the greats. There he is, Willie Miller, captain of Aberdeen. Willie, how did the players feel just before extra time? Did you feel as if you'd blown it maybe, even though you were still the one man up? No, extra time didn't really bother us. Uh, we're quite used to extra time. We've went to the last mm -hmm. three finals into extra time. So we always had the feeling, you, you get feelings like that at times. When you go into extra time, I always had that feeling that we'd do it. But I mean, the second half, Celtic did give us a fright. Uh, we played well in the first half, but all credit to Celtic in the second half. It was your second half. Now, that, that winning goal was, was quite a spectacular one because it came really from the man you brought on as substitute. Yeah. Buggy Bell. Bell. Yeah. Well, that was uh, my bonus, actually, of getting bail fit. I mean, he hasn't played enough games. But I knew that he would give us an hour, no, no problem. Tremendous shot, he had. Yeah. Left Did you think it was in? Uh, I thought, yeah, I was up, wasn't I? <laughs> Dancing about. But um, his left foot, too. Mm -hmm. But he can change the pattern of a game. He can change the course of a game. And just as well, Mark McGee was just yeah. in there sight. Took it well, game. actually. A difficult ball to take, actually. Wally, are you tired now? I know it's not quite the end of the season because next Saturday you'll be trotting out here as captain of Scotland, but are you feeling a bit tired now? Oh, I was a bit tired after the game, I must admit, but uh, a couple of days rest and then we'll be back in training again probably Wednesday right. for the Scotland-England game. And nobody feels tired when there's a Scotland-England game. Well, I'll tell you up. what, the producer said, look, on, I've been represented by the BBC to get a sip of the champagne and oh, have well. all that. All well, he all that people Oh, if only thinks he's tired, wait till I get him on Tuesday morning <laughs> before he goes to Scotland. That's marvellous, boys. Right, Thank good. you very much. Yeah. 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 It's going to be a happy journey for you back to Aberdeen. Oh, yes, no doubt about that. Hello, good evening and welcome to Sports Scene and a very chilly Pitodry indeed where the temperature has hardly risen above freezing point all afternoon and we've had a biting chilly wind to boot on this the 27th of April, would you believe. 
Well, at the start of the afternoon, Aberdeen required only one point to lift the Premier Division Championship. But there were other statistics and records to fall as well if they did win it. They would become the first team outside of Glasgow to win it two years in a row since Hibbs did that back in the 50s. And it would be the first time the flag had remained outside the city of Glasgow three years in a row. Well, they had bad news before the start of the game when it was uh, announced that Eddie Black was unfit to play, but they had more than an adequate substitute to fill in. Frank McDougall, scorer of 20 goals this season and Aberdeen's top scorer, even though he hasn't played since the 16th of February. And off Celtic go, playing against a quite extraordinary wind. I mean, the change in temperature overnight has been dramatic. And you, you'll probably see round the ground the remnants of the blizzard we had all morning. And Leighton, there was no offside flag. So we have Hewitt and Willie Miller. It's Miller taking it. Oh, that was very useful indeed. Neat little leap to the side. Taking it with his right foot and it curled away and Bonner perhaps just adding a little flourish at the end. Hewitt. Fortius runs in, Danny McGrain, slight mistake. So very nervy and edgy out there, McDougall can't get it. Woo. And that looked like a push and it just passed. I thought a slight push. What a marvellous chance there for McKimmy. Watch the full-back driving and the tackle from the back. And there I thought there was a push there. Oh. Start. Oh. Well, I thought there was a free kick just outside the box there. But it wasn't, and Stark took his time, wanted to cover it in, but over the top it went. Hewitt, looking quite sharp, McDougall, he gets the chance and it just passed. Great piece of goalkeeping eventually. Neat little touch there by Porteous. And McDougall rather surprisingly got a second bite at it. But Bonner was the better of him. That's Hewitt. We'll stay with him. John Hewitt. It's very strong again. Start and appeals for handling. As if it did, I think it was purely accidental. Pontius right into the tracks of McStay. Thank you very much, he says. <laughs> Bella, Garvey them turns superbly. And Johnson can't get a touch. Away so goes Billy Stark. It's a penalty. The referee says a hand was used. It's indicating a push. It's a penalty kick. Now, oh, this great turn there by Mugabe. And there it was, going across. And the referee judged that to be a push. Now, is his technique going to be similar? to Parkheads of last week. That's it, one nothing. Totally deceiving Leighton. Watch Leighton, there's all the movement of the goalkeeper first. There he goes, shoot. Make little run, start. Here's Portis with a chance. Great goalkeeping. Some of the best saves in the business are unconventionally made. This is quick retaliation by Aberdeen, and that's an appalling ball, really. Oh, it's almost there. Oh. Really, that ought 
That is a corner kick, and that really ought to be the goalkeeper's ball, you know. That was McKimmy. Uh, he sent it very wide. Picked up well. Now look at this ball. Far too high, and the goalkeeper really ought to have had it, but he overstretched, and that was almost a colossal blunder. I didn't know what it was, that's a bad corner kick by Hewitt. I think he deliberately tried to underplay that one. And there goes the halftime whistle. Celtic in that important lead. And I'm sure there'll be a buzz of conversation around the ground, in the press box and in the dressing rooms about that penalty kick. Well, off we go into the second half and it must be passing through Aberdeen's mind that uh, the last four meetings up here against Celtic, they've won them all, but it looks a little bit dicey for them at this stage. In these conditions, I didn't imagine it would be a high-scoring match, and now Celtic have edged in front. Battling against the wind, that ball. Yeah, push against Danny McGrain. Stay to McGarvey. Looked like a foul. Mr. Smith has been rather lenient on one or two occasions. Google. Well, looking a bit cumbersome. Now, Tommy Burr. Drive forward there by McGarvey. Got in behind McLeish. Slack looking ball, and it was Dougie Bell. Mark Adam did that well. Nodding it forward, here's a chase. Johnson looking very sharp. He'll get his shot, and he does. Oh, that would have finished out with I think. We've hardly seen him, and yet that. Superb dash forward. Away he goes with the run, taking McLeish with him. And decides to turn inside. Wrong footing the big defender. And watch how close this was to Mugabe. That's to Hewitt, McStay's there. Now Hewitt. Simpson opens it up, Porteous. Oh, well, I, a free kick given there, but it seemed to me both players shouldered each other. That's Porteous. Who is it? Yes, Miller, the captain, has equalised. It squeezed its way in. One each, a joyful bunch. Now Celtic, who have been so commanding in the air, suddenly caught up as the Aberdeen centre defender came in on this. Now he was given quite surprising language at watch. Now look at it squeezing its way past Bonner. And now we could be contemplating the last five minutes of the Premier Division Championship of 84-85 because if Aberdeen keep the scoreline as it is I think uh, they can claim that they will not be caught and the title will be theirs and believe you me, that is the way I think everybody will play it because they desperately want to clinch it in front of their own supporters technically speaking, Celtic could just about to catch up and goal difference, but it's asking a lot because Aberdeen will get another point anyway. But Celtic are fighting to the end. There are now four minutes left. And can Aberdeen hold out? Celtic have made a great match of it. Well, not a great match, a great contest of it. 
Max itself has been disappointing in many ways. Curling ball, and there it is. Well, it's been rolled off. The goalkeeper fouled. Be very interesting to see that one again. Celtic players are irate. Referee George Smith was right in the spot to see this incident. Across it went to that far side. Mother McLeod with it. And look at it, tantalising, dangerous, swerving viciously. Well, I'll tell you what, <laughs> didn't look too much wrong with that to me. Might, uh, from this angle, the foreshortened angle, not have taken it in all that much, to be fair, but uh, I've seen a lot worse let go. John Hewitt, can he get the shot in? It's not enough. Clear that's offside again. Cohen. Queen. Overdone. Cooper. Through the middle it goes Scott. Played it on well. It's not outside. Cured. He can't put it away. Oh dear. He must have scored much more difficult goals than that in his career. Well, he's probably looking at this right now and saying, why didn't I put it beyond all doubt? Referee's looking at his watch. It is a goal kick. And all eyes will be on George Smith now. We've played one full minute of injury time. Bushel in the mouth, and there it is. Aberdeen are the champions. And there in the middle, Alec Ferguson. Well, I think he's got a little bit used to that now. That's a Willie Miller. There he is. This, you're looking at one of the greatest players Scotland has ever known. To my mind, he's one of the greatest players I've ever seen. And that goal, so appropriately taken by Willie Miller, giving Aberdeen a draw that gives them the championship. I know technically people will say the goal difference may be caught up. It won't. The flag is theirs. Of that, there's no doubt. Well, I think the wind has almost blown you off uh, your feet or else it's too much champagne you've had. We'll uh, blame the wind. The conditions weren't ideal, were they? No, no. For both sets of players, obviously difficult. Uh, but I think then tomorrow and maybe in a, a week from now that we'll forget all about that part. The most important thing is I think we've done enough to win the championships. The victorious Aberdeen team. The manager has set them back on for a lap of honour. There's the man who scored that vital goal for Aberdeen in the 17th minute of the second half. A header from a corner kick. <laughs> get a red card for that <laughs> on an afternoon that's turned out gloriously after all the the weather that we've had this morning and yesterday the setting could not be better although of course as I said we've got to watch that wind and what it brings over the next 90 minutes or so well, that rising roar around Hamden Park is the anticipation of something like 60,000 throats getting ready for the first ever cup final between Hearts and Aberdeen. On a day that we hope matches the splendid weather we're now at least temporarily having. And that is a very strong wind that Hearts are facing. There's no question about that. 
and the free kick in the first 15 seconds. Gary Mackay. That's a very useful ball, Whittaker picking it up. Both teams wanting a very good start to this match. And there's the coolness of Willie Miller. He's an up and under. Kimmy a bit nervy. A lovely little touch there by Cahoon, and it's a corner kick. Well, Andy, although Hearts are playing against a strong wind, they've certainly taken the initiative. Yes, there's no doubt about that. They've certainly started the game in a very good manner, very positive, going straight at Aberdeen. And you must compliment them for that approach. And the corner kick, and they're finding it troublesome to keep that ball in. Wind blew it away, and that's Black. Who's a very good corner? Another one. Hard supporters will love this. Jim Layton doesn't. Must be a nervy moment for Jim. High quality though he is, he's been off for such a spell, and he's testing the Hamden swirl. Oh, he has Cushion Miller that time. Free kick. Good comes in. McDougall goes to the left. John Jewett will try the shot on. He does, and he scores. Brilliantly. John Jewett, the super sub, the man who scored in Gothenburg, puts Aberdeen in the lead in all oh, just about five minutes. One nothing. A superbly struck left foot shot. And he wants more. Now, look at the way he dragged the ball towards the fence, chose the precise moment to release an unsavable shot. Now, from this angle, the high quality of goalkeeping that Henry Smith possesses had no chance. That is accuracy at his best. He really drove forward with great confidence. The defence didn't know where he was going, and perfection in release. Oof. Near a shot at that end. Aberdeen defence massing and ranked. Kent. Oh, it's not so much a shot, it was a, more a splash than anything else. Jordan, it's Mackay. They tried that time. It really has a very powerful shot. Free kick. And just every night again, you get the impression of this Aberdeen defence, that they're defending, in fact, rather desperately, you know, Maybe slightly taken aback by the way that Hearts have responded to going one goal down so early. Free kick. Cooper right in the way, out they come. Here's John Robertson with a chance, and he scored! Oh, it looked like in the net from here. That is incredible. From our angle, that ball looked to be sailing into the net. Now, uh, this is taken from the side, it was just flicked up the that look, it up the goes, and just over. But from our angle, it looked as if it was going in the net. Like Master. Specialist in these long, floated, left-footed passes. <laughs> oh, 
Well, it came off of this, and it, it really was a marvellous chance. Floated in, Robertson, and watch this. Up it goes, and it looked as if it was dripping into the net, and in fact, it was the other side. Craig Libby, big defender, pounding forward. Miller, from whom Craig Levine could learn as a youngster one or two things yet. Well, I think they may be looking for the Hearts captain, Walter Kent, reading it rather ruefully. What a nice man Walter Kent is. Hard, hard player. And a straightforward and very pleasant man off the field. Still with a kind of inspirational quality about them. Bent in a beautiful position. Can he part with a right? He does almost. Still in play, and there it's over the top, and that was a brilliant break, Andy. Yes, that was a first-class break there, coming from left through to right, and a good cross from Jim Bett. And just it was the deflection, in fact, that uh, knocked the ball away. But that was a very, very good break from Aberdeen. Now, Beck is renowned for this good positioning. Yes, he's a, he's a marvellous forward runner, Jim Beck. And here we see him just taking the touch and playing in the cross. And you'll see here just a slight deflection from Whitaker, and it was enough just to knock the ball up in the air and cause a problem at the back post. If he hadn't got that touch, then there was every chance that Aberdeen would have scored another one there. Well, what about that? Bed trying to go around the outside, and that's pushed away from his feet. McMaster. Hewitt tries a long one! Oh, yes! That was a beautifully drilled shot again. He just paused for a moment, made up his mind, he was going to let go, and when he did, it bounced, swerved, skidded, and that was a very good save. Yes, that was an excellent save, first class, but a tremendous shot from John Hewitt. Aberdeen are obviously going to watch him very closely now. Where? Bet. Forward it goes. There was no side flag. Well, this is good quality striking, Andy, isn't it? Yes. Yes, excellent balance and a beautiful strike of the ball. Yes, Aberdeen will really have to start and use John Hewitt. He's obviously the key front player at the moment. Hewitt. Needle one two, referee waving play on. That was Cooper, Willie Miller coming forward. Now McQueen, Peter Weir. Second player comes up to cover, McDougal gets his header in. One touch from McDougal, he's done hardly anything in the game and yet it was almost a lethal one. Good run there. And a lovely cross and a gentle little touch. And away go Hearts. That's a very good save indeed. Berry. Right to the goal line. Needs to be a quality finish. There's a short in the century's pass from Mackay. So desperately unfortunate there was a deflection. It's a corner kick. Oh. Certainly a risky pass by Sandy Jordan. Well, it's a good ball indeed, Gary Mackay. 
Goal now would help Hearts cause, and that's almost an own goal. That really bothered the Aberdeen defence. Although Willie Miller doesn't look flustered, I think he's uh, camouflaging his anxiety. That was an excellent ball. Hewitt, I don't think, will get this. He did, did very well indeed. He's having a fine game. Try to curl it in. Virtually on the halftime whistle, it should go any second, and it does. Aberdeen are leading hearts by one goal to nothing. Aberdeen one up. Facing a very strong wind and the sun, and they have realized that even though they took an early lead, Hearts refused to lie down to it and indeed looked a very inspired team at times. And it really is good to see a performance like this. Aberdeen containing more artistry in the team, I suppose, and balance, and away go Hearts, and... Well, I think that's a bit unfortunate. This is this... Um, Robertson, I suppose, technically was in an offside position, but the ball had actually been played forward to him. Always difficult, pass back into the sun. Leighton making some kind of comment about it. Oh, beautifully flicked by Hewitt, he's having a superb game for Aberdeen today. Weir, Walter Kidd, well, there's a dummy, there's a goal, 2 nothing. John Hewitt, a superb goal by Aberdeen. And that was good beautifully. By Beautifully technically executed and the, the rippling red and white harvest of support acknowledging a superb piece of play. And that could be the goal that kills our parts. A, a, a really tenacious run here by Weir. The beautiful little dummy and excellently finished. Banner goes to the side, up comes the captain. Well, that's a lovely shot. Oh, great run by the captain, Walter Kidd. Oh, a little bit of anger there, and there's Willie Miller, the old general against the young one, and he's very annoyed about something. I mean, he should get a lawyer in and that. And that was a very good effort by the Hearts captain. Peter Weir. Not quite clear yet, McDougall coming after it. Trying to find Billy Stark, and he does. Oh, good play by McDougall. I mean, the, the obvious pass was to push it to the outside, and he went in the reverse direction and found the big man inside this where he decided to change his mind, go kind of southeast this time and away up towards the head of Stark and that was not far away. There's a touch and there's a ball! Unbelievably bad luck. Still there, Clark can't get it in, whipped away. Oh, they badly needed that. Very badly needed the goal there. It floated in, and there it was, flicked up. The shot by Berry almost broke the bar. Not a bad ball again.
Arie Glücklich. Oh yes, Leighton was down in that. He'd almost collapsed in a heap, Leighton, before the show, but ten yards before the shot reached him. A sound save by the keeper. John Robertson getting room for himself. You can see how Leighton was down there waiting for it to fold into his arms. It was a brilliant turn by John Robertson, but the strike wasn't exactly clean at all. Hart still pounding forward. Gary Mackay. Neat little turn. Well, there's a great pass. Robertson going in, kick. Penalty kick, surely no. Well, well, well. Aberdeen just struggling to get that away. And that wasn't so much a Hawks attack, that was a tornado going into that penalty area there. Now watch this, Mackay with a pass. Kid in great position. And this year, as he went forward, down he went, louch out for a penalty. Free kick, yes. I don't think the Hearts players can complain about that one. As I said, this man there, Walter Kidd, he's been a great example to his side. I know he's been booked, but you know that can happen in a cup final. He is a hard but fair player, and he's been driving them on in the second half. Oh, there's a third one, Billy Star. 3 0 for Aberdeen, and that is the cup final. Well and truly finished, I think, as far as Hawks are concerned. And the celebration for Aberdeen, with only 15 minutes remaining, will go on from now until Monday morning, I suspect, as Billy Stark picks up the killer goal. And it was beautifully done by Stark. That'll be a booking. Mackay very late with that. No, there's a bit of games we should have gone on here. It's all been a bit uh, unpleasant in the last few seconds. So, four Hearts players booked. And it looks to me as if he's booking the Hearts captain, and if that's the case, he's off. Isn't that tragic? What a sad ending to a player who's given his all for his club this afternoon. But if he's broken the rules, then off he has to go without any sympathy. Ten minutes remaining as McLeish picks it up. This is McKimmy drifting forward. He'll try the shot, and it wasn't far away. Just got slightly underneath it, but had the right intentions. Saw the gap in the heart's defence as he went forward. Probably see him just chipping at it more than anything else. There it was, underneath it, and all was going up. Oh, that slag and Hearts are looking slightly depressed at the moment. Here's McDougall, allowing players to come up on him. Joe Miller. Cooper. Peter Weir. He has Berry there. Gets it in, this must be another one it is. No, no, it's been disallowed. It is not the goal, the referee saying offside, I think. Oh no, a push, she's indicating a push. Still 3-0. Bad goes in front of him.
Bet has played a very useful role in this latter part of the match. It's a free run almost for McQueen. In that shadow there, and into the sun, and it's talk, and it's a side net. It's a matter of waiting it out now. Aberdeen know it, Hearts know it, and both sets of supporters. Robertson with the shot, whistling pass. I think there may have been a deflection, yes, a corner kick, and there. Aberdeen bench minus Alec Ferguson. He's watched the game from the stand, which I think must be the first cup final he's done that. Hearts fighting to the end. Young John Robertson shot coming in. We're watching the referee. And there it goes, the final whistle. Aberdeen have won the 1986 Scottish Cup final. And Alec Ferguson has now watched his team win the Scottish Cup in those occasions, 1982, 1983, 1984 and now 1986. And we are still chasing him for an interview. But it's the players who come first, not unnaturally. Tremendous performance by Aberdeen. They've now scored 20 goals in their history and cup finals. And up comes Willie Miller. And there, Willie Miller. This is the fourth time he's held that couple off. Scanlon, yes! Aberdeen have definitely won the championship. That's a brilliant ball, McGee. He's caught. There's a kiss and there's a cut. Could be there, it is, the winner, that will win the cup, that's it, to McKinney with a shot and he scored!